Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. The subject of today's video is this Porter Studio 464, but well, it's not an unusual variation in Japan, which is where it was released, but um, it's maybe less of a common sight in the US, EU and UK. If we examine the schematic of the 464, we can see that there were two release versions, one for the European, British and American markets, which looks like this and is something where familiar with on this channel, already done quite a few videos on it. It had four XLR inputs. This Japanese version, it's a different colour obviously, it's this kind of um, dark grey, more like the 424 Mark II, and the knobs and fader caps are a slightly different colour, but the main difference is instead of the XLR sockets, uh, we have this BBE enhancer. We turn that on and the BBE logo appears here in the LCD display. And uh, that's a effect that's being applied to the left right bus. I've used this a little bit, it sounds pretty good to me. Um, I like Enhancer, I like to use DBX so it compensates for that nicely. I'm not going to demonstrate the sound of it in this video, I'll probably try and do something kind of creative with it in a subsequent video. And in that video I'll experiment whether this is something that can only be applied as a master effect after the fact or whether you can actually track to tape with it so you know, effectively you could use it twice. But apart from the inclusion of that, the emission of the XLR sockets and the cosmetic change of the colours, it's not any different to the Ray 464 apart from the transformers expecting 220 volts AC instead of 240 volts AC in my case as a UK national. So that's the initial, hey, this exists. That's interesting, isn't it? Part of the video over. The rest of the video is more for you repair nerds because when I first got this, there was no audio coming out of the mixer at all. So um, I went through a process of trying to derive what the um, expected voltage output from the PSU section was from the schematic and also what the cable functions were. Because spoiler alert, it turned out the power was all right, but there was no audio getting to the mixer. And then I was doing some signal tracing so um, there's a bit of insight into when you've got a port studio of this later type where it's in two parts and it's kind of difficult to see how you would hook it all up and still be able to signal trace so I partly disassemble this so that the mixer is naked as it were and it's kind of separated electrically from the lower part which is still complete. I'm using mailing bags, you could use anything non-conductive to stop the upper and lower printed circuit boards shorting against each other. So I do some signal tracing, end up finding that it's the master fader that was broken, so I replace that. And then after that, there's still a problem where these um, bus switches are behaving strangely. And so I end up doing quite a lot of um, track repair, replacement of capacitors and resistors around this area of that board. So if that kind of repair vlog interests you, stick around for the rest of this video. I also, for those of you who are like real nerds about the 464, maybe you've like worked on one of these before and you're wondering how this differs from the pale grey one, then I do go into the differences on the circuit board. Basically it is the same circuit board on both variants, it's just there's some slight variations here-ish and here-ish to accommodate this, so I, I do kind of look at the specifics of that towards the end of the video. So looking at the schematic for the 464, this is the power that we should be getting from the power board and the larger socket that um, goes to the core playback board. And sorry about autofocus, I just, um, I'm, because I'm going handheld, I don't really know how else to film this. So we should have power down pen, so that's going to be some sort of logic signal, so God knows what we'll read from there, but we should be reading about plus and minus 6 volts. 0 volts, minus 10 volts, plus 10 volts, and 0 volts. And then the black one going to the mixer, I am pointing at the wrong one, um, we'll have two lots of minus 10 volts and two lots of ground. Over here, um, I've got the 464 open. You can hear the motor in the transport shit in the bed slightly because um, the control PCB isn't attached. If I touch that, the meter should level itself out at 0 volts. They're both on ground. I'm using the metal chassis around the transformer's ground. And then got a female to female and a male to male two point cable hooked up to the positive terminal, and um, just because that's easy to put on these output pins. So what we're getting some random value of zero point six volts, and it's fluctuating. So maybe that's the power down logic signal. So six volts ish. 
minus six volts ish. This one's ground, I believe. Yep, zero volts, minus 10 and a bit, plus 10 and a bit. The transformer is really designed for 220 volts AC and then one 240 volts AC, so um, that will explain the difference. I think that's probably within the tolerances of the various components. The power coming out of that socket is fine, and then this one should have 10 volts ground, 10 volts ground. So minus 10, nothing. 10. Nothing. They're not saying the schematic they were both meant to be negative 10. Negative. Positive. I think that's probably a typo on the schematic. Most operational amplifiers to work, then you're going to need a positive and a negative rail. Fix the problem with the mixer some other way, and I'll come back and explore that. But I'm going to assume for now that that discrepancy between the meter reading and the schematic is fine. My next step, having established that uh, the power from that board is okay, is to check that there is power going into the mixer board. Because there's not much point in me doing a bunch of uh, signal tracing if there's no power, because uh, all the op amps in the audio signal path will be turned off if there's no power. So I do happen to have the schematics. I think I'm just going to say blueprints. I've said in another video, I'm really not going... I should just look it up on the internet. I don't know how to say schematic or schematic. But anyway, these electrical blueprints, I have them for this mixer. So what I've done, and this is good practice, well, <laughs> it is for me, whether you have the blueprints or not, is to get some masking tape and label what all the different plugs do. Because you can get very confused otherwise. I'll talk you through in case you've got the same units. The direct outputs from the four channels go to the tape machine on the RP. That's the record playback board via this cable. This cable that terminates here. It's uh, your channel one and two effects, inserts and returns. Um, so that's going to the jack socket board up here. Quick correction, I had this cable here at the top mislabeled. Um, I'd said that it was the input of the channels because the channel input is passing through the BBE board, that's bollocks. On the Japanese model, you have this input cable coming from the jack sockets instead of the input coming via two wires to the balanced input section. That wire is present in the Japanese model instead. So that's how I misread the schematic, but it actually plugs into this red socket on uh, the input jack PCB. So there's also a cable down here, left, right, send, return. Um, you can also add it as a effect to the entire left, right stereo bus. And that's what this cable does. That's your headphone in and out. There's also one wire which is the on-off signal for the BBE so that when you press the button up here um, the little BBE sign on the LCD display comes on and off. Here's your jack channels input for channels uh, 5 through 12 of the mixer. This one here is how the plus and minus 10 volts gets from this board to the BBE board. The plus and minus 10 volt inputs this board from the power board via this cable here. And we've got the four tape outs. I think the rest are just um, output cables. Um, we've got the monitor left and right input. We've got the Q and FX outputs and jack. The outputs for the line, the monitor and the two track. That's going to your jack output boards. I think that's everything. So, in terms of power, the only ones we've got to worry about is this one, that's how the power's getting in, and then it's leaving to power the BBE via this cable here. So if we test those, then we should be able to establish whether this board is receiving power. So obviously the mixer board is detached from the plastic, so I can access it. And I've got um, some mailing bags underneath, so it doesn't short out against the circuit board beneath it. This is the only power input that I've got plugged in. The negative lead of my voltmeter is attached to the chassis. That's zero volts relative to these readings. And uh, we should see zero volts on the meter if we connect those to it. Now you can see that input cable is coming in on the socket here. So if we take our readings here, zero volts, so that's ground, zero volts, zero volts, 
and zero volts because I haven't turned it on. <laughs> Let's try that again. Negative ten and a half, more or less zero. Positive ten and a half, more or less zero. What about the output to these? This BBE board, ten and a half, more or less zero. Ten and a half, is that negative? So power getting into the board doesn't seem to be the problem. So I just want to check that the tape outputs are reaching the mixer okay. So they come out of this socket here. Also, depending on how your sync switch is set up, then they come out of this socket here. And those go to your jack C. So I just want to check that all those connections are working. So I've got the control board just dangling down there. If I press play, um, we've got a separate problem here where channel 3 isn't showing up on the meter. I'll diagnose that later. But now if I test against these pins here. So track stream flows backwards. This is Droman Brothers nylon cold cuts, which I highly recommend. Um, so, so this is the output socket that goes to the mixer, and then these your tape out. So if I put my audio probe against the positive pin in there, you can hear them. All four are working as they should do. So let's now move on to figuring out why the audio isn't moving through the mixer board. I've shown this before. Basically all that is, is it's like an old probe and it's going to the positive pin of a pin of a jack socket. There's a little capacitor in there to stop any DC screwing with my speaker. And then the negative pin of the jack socket you attach to your zero volts point in your circuit. And then all that's plugged into is um, a, a monitor. So like, I've got these relatively inexpensive Alesis powered monitors. You could use a guitar amp, whatever. It's been about half an hour. I've discovered that the existing master fader wasn't passing signal. I've prayed it apart and it's gonna be hard to see because of autofocus, but the brushes have snapped completely. I had a spare taken from a 44 Mark III that's installed, so that's not a problem anymore. But what I'm finding is that I'm still only getting left audio output from the headphone jack and from the line out. The right seems to be off, though both sides of the signal are as getting as far as the monitor control. Again, I'm establishing that by touching uh, my audio probe against the various contacts. Uh, scratch what I just said there on my FUD. I had all the pans panned left, so obviously I wasn't getting any right channel. Um, but yeah, it seems to be responding okay. Um, I'm probably going to reassemble it and see how I get on now. So uh, yeah, that's an awful lot of testing basically to discover that <laughs> it's just the master fader that's fucked. But sometimes you get confused enough, that's what you got to do. I hope this gave you some sort of idea of how you test one of these units that opens in two halves like that. You basically got to choose whichever half of it. Usually the upper half is less complicated than have it hanging out of its plastic casing. I kind of gave up documenting every single thing I was doing to repair this because it turned out to be quite a convoluted process. I was getting this weird thing where the pan control was sending the left right output to one side of the line out panned hard left and then to the other side of my headphone input but you couldn't ever get it into both sides of the line out and the headphone and so you can see that these original caps are green I've replaced a lot of them in the kind of stereo area with black ones I think that was actually unnecessary what I found when I was desoldering these switches is that there was a broken pin in one of the resistors I'll maybe turn it over in a minute and show you there's a lot of broken traces and I think this was stored quite badly for a while you can see how mottled some of the metal casing of the faders is and uh, that's affected the, the tracing on the other side so a lot of broken tracks and so on but I've got it working again now so before I attach it to the case I'll just show you the differences between this and the regular EU and American distributed 464. Um, first difference is down here. You see where these capacitor symbols are here. There would be two capacitors instead of this cable. This cable takes the output of the master fader and sends it through the BBE board on the back and returns it back. 
there are resistors in these two positions on the EU, UK, US model, but they're of a lower value. I've got 82,000 ohm resistors in there. They're comically large. They just happen to be that size. When I ordered them from eBay, I didn't actually think about the form factor. So you can see very clearly which of the ones I've replaced. It's these big blue ones. You can probably get that value in a smaller size, but you can see where they are at least. And then up here, these two empty sockets here are where the balanced input board would enter and then this one would be empty so this joins directly onto this board here so i think this board this jack socket board is slightly different i'm actually going by memory here i can't remember you can check the schematics the schematics are on my blog for a free download that's the other area oh and one other thing down here there's a little place w9 with a jumper wire um, that would be empty on the EU, UK, US version. So really two areas, one where the balanced input comes in, that's different, and then this area is different because you're sending the output of the master fader to and back from the PPE. That's the only differences. And of course from the rear here's the PPE board, you would have a balanced input board going to your XLR sockets on the other variant of this 464. And I was talking about earlier, you can see there's several places where I've had to repair the printed circuit board because the traces were coming away. So, you know, I've scraped away the green insulating paint with a scalpel, put down some flux and bent the component wire so it's touching the exposed track beyond the brake and um, soldered it 